Hello. Water abstraction involves collecting raw water at the source intake system and transporting it to the treatment plant, storage tank, distribution network or directly to the consumer, depending on the scale and design of the system. Today we will look at the different water abstraction technologies, such as gravity supplies, pump types and energy sources needed to drive them. We consider in more detail the basic working principle of different pump types, as well as their applicability and limitations. Finally, we will look at how to read and understand the pump curves needed for selecting and specifying an appropriate pump and consider main factors influencing operation of a pumping station. The best way to abstract water in many cases is by using gravity. Gravity flow water supply is a system in which water falls due to its own weight from a source situated above to the users below. The process is driven by the potential energy water has due to its elevation. Due to missing moving parts, Relative simplicity of the system, the gravity water supply shamas do not require complex maintenance and are rather robust and reliable. To design a gravity flow water supply system, you would need to calculate the pipe diameter required, considering the elevation differences, the losses due to friction in the pipe, as well as energy losses produced by turbulence introduced by everything which is not straight, like valves, elbows or reductions. Furthermore, you would need to study the topography of the system, to minimize high and low points which can lead to the air trapping or accumulation of sediments and to avoid negative pressures. Brake pressure tanks might be required if height difference is considerable. There are few softwares and freeware available which can help you to design a gravity flow system. If location of the water sources and topographical characteristics of the area do not allow the use of gravity, pumps need to be used. Pumps are used to lift water against the gravity or pressurize it to move it through a pipeline at a required flow rate. A huge variety of technologies have evolved and have been introduced for different uses and needs. The pumps are often grouped according to the type of operation, to manual pumps and motorized pumps. For the motorized pumps, different energy sources can be used to drive the pump, such as diesel, electricity, wind and solar energy. Furthermore, considering the method of displacement of water applied by a pump, we can distinguish between impulse pumps, positive displacement pumps and velocity pumps. Hydraulic ram pump uses height difference and water hammer effect to develop pressure which allows a part of the input water to be lifted up higher than the water source without any external energy supply. Each 1 meter difference in the feed pipe can pump water almost 30 meters up. Hydraulic ram pumps require two things, a reliable source of running water and a working flow. The pump works as follows. Water flow from the source by gravity through a drive pipe, picks up speed and kinetic energy until the increasing drag flow closes the waste valve. The momentum of the water against the closed waste valve causes water hammer. The pressure in the pipe rises and the check valve opens and some water is forced into the delivery pipe. With slowing of the movement of water, the check valve closes. Water moves back and forward again, restarting the process. The pressure vessel contains air to reduce the hydraulic shock and improving efficiency by more constant flow of water. These kind of systems work for a long time without any maintenance as long as water is available. Ram pumps are especially suitable for communities in hilly areas with water sources located lower than the community or on another side of the valley. A positive displacement pump makes a fluid move by trapping a fixed amount of water and forcing displacing this trapped volume into the dis discharge pipe. Basically, the pump uses the principle of expanding space or cavity on the suction side and decreasing cavity on the discharge side. The volume remains constant during one cycle of operation, which means that theoretically positive displacement pumps should produce the same flow when the speed is constant, independently on the pressure on the discharge side. Depending on the type of mechanism used to move water, the positive displacement pumps can be classified into three major groups. Reciprocating type positive displacement, rotary type positive displacement, and linear type positive displacement. Reciprocating type positive displacement pumps are commonly used in a number of applications. Many community hand pumps for duck wells and boreholes are reciprocating piston or plunger pumps. When water is available less than 7 meters below ground, suction pumps are often of an interest, as they can be easily accessed at the ground level to perform maintenance. For deeper wells and boreholes, direct action hand pumps or high lift hand pumps raising water from the depths of up to 45 meters or even 100 meters can be used. 
Rotary type positive displacement pumps use rotating mechanisms that creates vacuum and captures and draws water. Rotary vein pump consists of veins placed in a circular rotor that rotates inside a circular cavity. The centers of these two circles are offset, causing the veins to slide in and out of the rotor, creating chambers. Progressive cavity pump, also known as helical rotor pump, transfers water by progressing it through the sequence of small sized cavities when the rotor turns. This type of pumps are as well fixed flow pumps, operating at a constant flow rate, which is proportional to the rotation speed and almost independent on the head. This type of pump is robust and is less sensitive to particles in water than other types of rotary positive displacement pumps and can be used even to pump sludge. Abrasive materials will however damage it. It is quite common pump used for motorized pumping of water from boreholes. A rope pump is a pump which consists of a hanging rope placed in the well and drawn up through a long pipe with the bottom immersed in water. Round discs of washers matching the diameter of the pipe are attached to the rope. Those pull water to the surface. This type of pump is commonly used in rural areas on hand dug wells for community or self-supply of water. If the positive displacement pump operates by manipulating the available space inside the pump, the velocity pumps operate by manipulating the velocity of fluid during its movement through the pump. A radial flow pump, also known as centrifugal pump, first converts energy of a motor into velocity, or better to say kinetic energy, by a rotating impeller. When impeller rotates, it spins the water sitting in the cavities between the veins outward and provides centrifugal acceleration. As water leaves, the low pressure area is creating, leading to suction of more water. The kinetic energy of water coming out of an impeller is afterwards harnessed by creating resistance to the flow. Water meets as a stationary diffuser or volute, which slows it down and converts the kinetic energy into the pressure energy. Axial flow pumps differ from radial flow and centrifugal pumps in principle by the design of the rotating elements. The axial flow pump uses elements similar to a propeller which moves or pushes water axially and operates usually at much smaller pressures and higher flows than centrifugal pumps. Mix pumps do both, radial acceleration and pushing of water, and let water exceed the impeller between 0 and 90 degrees from axial direction. This leads to high operating pressures and flow rates. Both axial flow and mixed flow pumps are not very common in emergency water supply applications. A practical difference between the velocity and positive displacement pumps is how they operate under closed valve conditions. Positive displacement pumps physically displace fluid, so closing a valve downstrip of a positive displacement pump produces a continual pressure build-up that can cause mechanical failure and damage of the pipeline or pump. Velocity pumps differ in that they can be safely operated under closed valve conditions. Due to the different operating principle, pumping head of positive displacement pump theoretically does not depend on the pump speed. While for velocity pumps, discharge rates vary considerably if the head against water is being pumped. That is the reason why you need to read and understand pump curves if you need to choose and specify a centrifugal pump. A typical pump curve has two axes, horizontal one which shows the flow rate through the pump and vertical one, showing head, also sometimes called pressure. The first information we can read from any pump curve is the flow the pump will develop at any given operating head. This curve is called also pump performance curve. Any piping system used to transport pump water can be characterized by a head loss, which as well depends on the flow rate of water in the system. Head loss will increase with the flow rate. This red curve is called system characteristics curve. The point where the pump performance curve and system characteristics curve intersect is called pump operating point or duty point. At the duty point, there is a balance between the system demands and what the pump can deliver. For each pump, the manufacturer of the pump will define the allowable pump operating range, indicating the values of minimum and maximum flow rate. The operating point of the pump needs to be in the operating range to provide trouble-free operation. For centrifugal pumps, multiple curves can be pictured on the pump curve. Those show the performance of the pump at different impeller diameters. Impellers can be trimmed to match the impeller to the head and flow needed in the application within the given range. In addition to head and flow, pump curves will also provide efficiency information. 
Efficiency is a relationship between the input power and the water power being generated by the pump. Obviously, no pump has 100% efficiency, and pumps require more input power than water power generated by the pump. The best efficiency point on this example is 60%. The middle part of the pump curve illustrates the net positive head required, which is basically the suction characteristics of the pump at different flows. Each point along the curve shows the positive suction head in meters, required to avoid, for example, cavitation, which can damage the pump. As you see on this picture, it doesn't differ a lot for different impeller trims. The lowest graph at the bottom of the cur pump curve shows usually the power curve. This curve indicates how much power the pump will require at any particular flow point. This information is useful for calculating power consumption costs and ensuring that selected motor is suitable for the chosen pump. Mm -hmm. Pumping stations belong to many water supply systems which require delivery of water from source to treatment or distribution network, and it cannot be done by entirely by gravity. Interruption or breakdown of a pumping station leads inevitably to the interruption of the water supply of the entire area. In order to increase reliability of a pumping station, adequate standby capacity is required. Trained operators, regular servicing, reliable energy sources and spare parts are the major factors which need to be ensured. Rehabilitation of the pumping station belongs to the common activities required in an emergency context, especially in urban and peri-urban areas affected by the crisis. While in few cases provision of fuel can be already sufficient, in other cases complex services, repair and replacement can be required. During this lecture we discuss gravity water supply and learn that gravity supplies in hilly areas are usually systems which do not require a high degree of maintenance. Furthermore, we looked at the basic operating principles and differences of various common types of pumps, such as impulse pumps, positive displacement pumps and velocity pumps, and learn how to read pump curves of centrifugal pumps. Finally, we mentioned major factors needed for reliable operation of a pumping station. See you during the next lecture.